Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my modern C++ series. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at some bit manipulation algorithms. Now, previously, if you've watched the previous few videos, we've been doing things like bitwise and, bitwise or, left shift, right shift. We've looked at bit set data structure, but now we want to look at some more data structures to just, well, play with bits. And this is actually going to answer one of my questions that I posed in a previous video of, you know, how to swap bits. Well, I actually dug around and there's a nice algorithm if I just want to swap the ordering of bits, meaning little endian to big endian or vice versa, you can do so. So that can be really, really handy for different applications like networks, for instance. So anyways, let's go ahead and dive into CPP reference and without further ado, see where these bit manipulation algorithms are, which were added in C20. Now, immediately you'll see bit manipulation here under uh, the general utilities library. I'm going to go to it from the numeric uh, algorithms here, which you can actually go to. And if you scroll down here, uh, somewhere you will see bit manipulation, which gets you to the same uh, location there. Uh, but just wanted to show you where that was. So uh, today we're just going to play around and have some fun with some of these different operations here. We'll try a few of them. Um, and I want to start off with some of the rotate operations here, rotate left and rotate right. Um, this is just kind of a nice one uh, where basically we take in the value and again, it's going to be an unside type and then we just shift the positions. But since it's doing the actual rotation or the shift here, it'll roll the bytes around here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and include a uh, bit set here. And I'll go ahead and include a uh, bit here for our uh, algorithms, okay? Uh, so again, we're gonna need both of those here. Um, and it can be also nice, uh, I'll follow along with this example here to include some of the fixed width types, which we've also covered uh, very, very recently here, uh, just so you can work with the unsigned types here, okay? Which is what this indicates that it's uh, working with here. Um, so let's go ahead and um, create a new, unsigned uh, type here, uh, u int eight underscore t. Uh, I'm just gonna call it, yeah, bin. I'll follow along with this sort of example here. And we'll just use uh, something like this here. Let's do one, 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 zero, zero, one, something like that here, just to give us a binary number here. And uh, what am I gonna wanna do here is go ahead and call this, uh, let's see, rotate left function here. So bitwise left rotating. So we're gonna kind of roll the bits uh, left here. Uh, so let's go ahead and give that uh, example here. Um, and we could use bit set for casting. Let's see if that if they're using that in this example here. Uh, I actually don't know why they have bit set here. Maybe they don't need it here. Uh, oh, uh, oh, they are using the, the cast here. Because again, um, yeah, that, that's kind of handy. Uh, actually, let, let's use that here. Uh, I'm going to use it. I'm going to call it uh, cast bin binary cast maybe as a name for it. I don't know. And we're working with a bit set of eight bits here. Uh, so that's going to be kind of nice here. So anyways, let's do a binary cast here just to see our original uh, thing here uh, of our binary number here. Okay. And let's go ahead and compile this. I'm going to need at least C++23 for these examples, or excuse me, C++20 because of the bit manipulation algorithm. So that's why I'm compiling as such. Uh, and this works as follows here. Okay, so we can see our binary number printed out. Uh, and again, I've just defined this. This is like a type def. So again, if you haven't seen my video on using, you can check that out. Um, but yeah, it's just basically doing a, you know, we have a typecast now for a specific type here. Um, and just to make this a little bit nicer, let's just call this binary cast eight so we know that the size matches here. Uh, I know that's probably gonna be a little bit annoying to type out, but again, I don't know. If I was building a library out of this, that's maybe what I would do here. So anyways, let's go ahead and just have our original value here, original. And we'll kind of print that out here. Let's go ahead and move this over a bit. Uh, and then let's do our rotation here. Uh, so what that's going to mean here is we're going to need to do our uh, binary cast. That's because we want to see the output. And let's roll our bits uh, to the left or to the right here. So roll, uh, let's see, ROTL, rotation left. And uh, let's just do it by, um, and again, let's see what the value is. So X, I believe, is our value. And yeah, S is the number of positions to shift. Let's just shift by one here. Okay, just so we can uh, see this here. Okay, so let's go ahead and recompile and rebuild here. Oops, and I need, yeah, standard, uh, what was I 
thinking here. Standard. There we go. And let's give that a try here. Okay, and now we see we rotated to the left uh, by one here. Okay, and let's go ahead and give ourselves some annotation here. Uh, let's just go ahead and say comma one here. Okay. Uh, or yeah, comma one here. It's just something like that, just so we can see what the operation is. Okay, so there, we've rotated this guy to the left and it's you know, gone to the very end here. Okay, so just so you can see that a few more times, maybe let's do it with two here. Um, there we go. Just so you can see some more of the bits kind of rolling around here. Okay, uh, and then the right will do it in the opposite direction here. Okay, so just for the sake of completeness, Let's go ahead and do a right rotation, rotor uh, here. And there we go. Uh, so then here we have shifted three over. Uh, now, now this is kind of interesting here. Let's see, so we rotated to the right here. Uh, again, we're comparing against this one here, against our original, uh, because that's, you know, uh, our binary number here that we have rotated. So again, um, what's value have we gotten? Um, oh, I guess I did two positions here. That's why it's looking a little bit funky to me. Let's just do one position here. So it matches what we printed out here. Sorry about that. Um, we've rotated this guy uh, one bit over. Ah, sorry, this is gonna be too too hard for you to read if you see both of them at, if you're trying to understand rotate right. <laughs> here, here we go. So I've just kind of pushed this guy off to the right. All these other bits slide over to the right and then you can see they're grouped together. Okay, so yeah, now hopefully you can see that now. Okay, that made it a little bit more clear. Uh, but I'll leave all those examples there and let's explore some more. So those are our rotating the bits here. Um, let's see what else we have here. Um, let's see. So this is kind of neat here. Let's see. Has single bit. So checks if the number is an integral power of two, right? Um, so let's, let's go ahead and do this example again. Let's go ahead and grab this guy here. And let's just call this uh, pow2 and not, pow2 not. Uh, okay, so we can kind of go ahead and see this example here. Uh, I don't know, I'm just gonna throw in some random bits here like such. And this one, let's make sure it is a power of two. Okay, I'm gonna put in the value of four there. And let's go ahead and see this. Now this this is probably useful because you wanna see if you wanna like multiply or divide something. If it's a power of two, then you can just left shift uh, or right shift, right? Uh, and do a clean uh, divide here. Um, so let's do standard has a single bit. And we need to pass in pow two. Let's see here. I believe it just takes in one parameter. Yep. And there we go. And this one will be pow two not. Okay, so we should see a one and then a zero in our output. We should see a one and a zero here. Okay, so as simple as that here. Uh, so check if we have a power of two. Could be useful for, you know, optimizing shift uh i'll just say multiply slash divide operations here okay uh, and then let's see this was our rotation uh operations all right let's look a little bit more these are kind of fun here uh byte swap here this is kind of one that i want to take a look at here uh so reverse the bytes in the given integer n byte swap uh, so again this is like a per byte level this will take the uh uh let's see do i have my clipboard open let's open that up or rather, I mean my drawing board, here we are. And uh, so basically the idea is if I have something like F, E, I'm gonna draw these in hex because that's gonna be easier. Zero, one, I don't know, 73, something like this. Right, here's sort of the byte order here. Uh, right here are the bytes. Uh, here are their indices. Usually I'm reading these zero, one, two, three. Now some architectures though would reorder these so you would want uh, F E on this side, zero one, zero two, and 73 here. Okay. So the, the order would still be, uh, in this way, zero, one, two, and three. Okay. So this just kind of depends on the architecture, whether you're a big Endian or a little Endian. Okay. So if you know what your architecture is and if you're targeting some other, uh, architecture and this isn't being handled, you know, for whatever reason, or you're writing the software that handles this, um, 
you know, you might want to uh, handle this uh, byte swap here. So let's just do byte swap here, example. Uh, let's create a byte here. I'm going to do a uint 8t again. Uh, bytes, byte, one byte here. Um, actually, let's make this a 32-bit uh, integer, so bytes. Uh, FF, uh, and let's make it sort of in descending order just so you can see DD. Uh, again, we could break these up with apostrophes if we want AA and 77. Um, and well, let's see here. How are we going to write out the bytes here? Let's write out another. Uh, uh, actually, we could just do this with hex here on our standard C out here. Let's just write the hex out and I'll write out bytes. Okay, standard and line here. And then let's go ahead and write out the byte swap here. Uh, byte swap our bytes. Okay, and then I want to, uh, since since Cout is a global object, uh, and remember that uh, from my videos on streams and Cout, I'm going to reset this to decimal here just in case I forget later. <laughs> so that's why I need to do that here. In fact, I actually don't need to set this to hex twice here. Okay, so if, you, if that doesn't make sense, watch my other videos on C out. Uh, let's go ahead and run this. But now you can see, you know, this is our default order, it looks like, sort of as I've written it out, which is nice. Uh, I like that. Uh, now, how the computer might be interpreting it, right? We can swap the bytes here. So that's what it is. Uh, that's kind of nice here. Uh, this is a C23 feature. This is why a few videos ago I was saying, hey, uh, what is this? You know, does anybody know a way to do this? Um, uh, and of course, there's little bit manipulation tricks for like swapping bytes or whatever, which maybe this is uh, what it's using here. Uh, but this reverses the bytes here. Uh, interesting that the possible implementation might be to treat this as a bit cast uh, array and then reversing it. I wonder, is it converting it to like a string and then reversing it? That would be one way to do it. Uh, <laughs> a little bit expensive, uh, right? Probably want to use some better tricks. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, some nice tricks for printing out the bytes here. I mean, you can immediately see where some of these useful things are. Like if you've written a debugger or want to dump out some memory and you know space stuff out or change the architecture. So again, just, just handy little uh, tricks here. Uh, there's, there's other useful things like, um, let's see, counting the you know, number of zeros and ones. Um, I'm going to leave those. You, you could probably check those out here. Let's see. Counts the number of one bits uh, in an unsigned integer. Oh, yeah. Pop count here. Returns the number of one bits in the value X here. Yeah, this is kind of neat here. Um, let's see. There was count the number of consecutive ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Consecutive ones. Yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting. I mean, why would you care about this? Uh, counting the number of consecutive ones. I mean, let's say you're doing like some sort of compression algorithm and you're looking at the individual bits, for instance, and you want to do like run length encoding. So there are like nice applications where you could try this out if you're looking for places to exercise this. Um, and aha, this is uh, the other thing that's kind of nice here, Indian. Uh, let's actually see, what is my machine? I think I know, uh, but I'm just going to cheat and uh, ask it. <laughs> let's see, let's see what my machine is. Uh, so if I need to do this byte swap, uh, Indianness. Okay. Uh, let's see here. How do we write this out here? Can I just print it out? Okay. If, ooh, we can use a const expert here. If const expert, uh, stand in Indian native equals an Indian big. Let's see here. Uh, Big Indian machine. I think I'm a little Indian machine, but let's see if I'm wrong. Uh, else, let's go ahead and yank that. Let's go ahead and do little Indian. Let's compile it. Yeah, I am a little uh, Indian machine here. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of handy here. So again, this might be useful things to know about. Um, I, uh, as far as world machines go, somebody who's maybe working in the architecture world right now, I wonder where is more. Uh, like I seem to recall, like big Indian machines were quite popular. Now maybe we've moved more towards little Indian, but uh, again, that that could change. Um, that that could be outdated knowledge. So somebody, please let me know. Um, you know, if we're shifting or finally converging on one type of machine here, <laughs> depending on the different architectures, or if it's just scattered everywhere, uh, or in domains, like embedded is one way or whatever. Um, okay, 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, what else do we have here? Now, this is kind of useful. Bit width. Find the smallest number of bits needed to represent a given value. Um, that's kind of cool. Let's see here. Let, let's try that out here. Uh, bit width. Uh, standard C out here. Let's just output the bit uh, width of the number 325. Okay, I know it's bigger than 225 or 255, so it's more than one byte. Let's see, is that just gonna print out two for us? Uh, let's see, what do we do here? Uh, okay, standard bit width of the value X here. Okay, um, why didn't it like that here? Let's go ahead and see here. Uh, it doesn't like no matching function. Let's see, maybe this isn't supported. Okay, C plus plus 20 bit width, I think I spelled it right. It is, oh, it's, it's, and it's only const expert, which is actually kind of interesting here. Um, I wonder if I need a type defined here, uh, meaning that this has to be like, let's see, int uh, x equals 325 here. Maybe that's it here, maybe it, because 325 is kind of arbitrary. Let's see here. Uh, I wonder, maybe my compiler just doesn't support it here. Uh, that I am running this on here. No matching function for bit width. Uh, taking a, okay, let's see. I'll just match their example unsigned X here. Okay, it did find it here. And it says I need at least nine bits here. Now I wonder why it doesn't just take, let's see, let's read a little bit about this one. It's kind of interesting. If X is not zero, calculates the number of bits needed to store the value X. Okay, if X is zero, it returns zero. Overload participates in an overload resolution only if T is an unsigned. Ah, it has to be an unsigned integer type. Sure. Okay. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, fair enough. You know, and usually um, one of the reasons for these types of things here, if I'm just working with raw bits and bytes, I want to use the unsigned version so that I don't get that, you know, uh, you know, most significant bit, which is one, which is sort of the two's complement form. Uh, which maybe you know some of you folks learned about. Uh, so, anyways, that that makes sense here. Uh, let's see if I do uh, 325. Let's see if I put the specifier there. Okay, then that that'll work here. Okay, UL is the other uh, way to do it here. So, UL is you know for an integral unsigned type here, unsigned long. Okay. Um, okay, so there you have it. We have some interesting algorithms here. Uh, I'm going to talk about BitCast in a separate video. That's going to be the probably one of the next ones coming up here. So stay tuned for that here because uh, I think that one's a little bit more involved here and interesting. But that pretty much covers, you know, the the algorithms I think that are interesting. And I think, again, the ones that are particularly interesting are like the uh, rotation ones that preserve the actual bits here. That can be very useful for various operations. Uh, we've got different operations for counting things. Maybe you want to do stuff with compression and so on. Um, and of course, checking your endianness. So hopefully that helps, you know, gives you a little bit of a preview of various bit manipulation algorithms. Uh, as always, if you've been enjoying these last videos on bits or just anything, uh, you can track your progress here on courses.mshot.io. We got a bunch of C++ videos there, so feel free to check those out. There's a bunch of other great courses there with different things that might be interesting to you. Um, but otherwise, yeah. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you're using these uh, library functions in any interesting way. Let me know about that Indianness machine. I can Google a little bit later as well <laughs> what I find. Uh, but anyways, uh, thanks for your time and attention, folks, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode.